Welcome back to the Story of Liberty. This is your host, John Boma. When does tyranny become tyrannical? By scripture, it happens when a ruler breaks the commandment of 2 Samuel 23.3. He that rules over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. That's what the Bible says. You know, it happened to the pilgrims when they embarked for America because they knew that a king knowingly and deliberately contravened the will of God. It made it impossible for them to follow that false will of a man. By the Magna Carta, it happened when the English common law that was established was broken. The ruler ceased to act under the law and he denied the people their rights as guaranteed by that law. Well, it happened here in America, and that's how our nation got founded, when these rulers, King George, he imposed taxation without their consent or representation. We even have that today in our health care law, where it was rammed through without the people's consent, in essence. King George, his first step was to increase the size of the British force that was garrisoned in America from 3,100 men to over 7,500. The people in the colonies, they saw no need for this increase, but then what did the colonies have to say about this matter? Very little. You know, the cost of garrisoning these troops was approximately 200,000 pounds per annum. It was a huge sum of money then. And, well, they decided, the king decided, the crown decided that the colonies would pay for this indirectly by imposing various taxes, duties. The first was the Molasses Act of 1733. The colonies would, could still buy molasses for making sugar and, and rum, but only from the British interest in the West Indies. There was taxes. And then the new tariffs came that were imposed the most brutal of all of them was the Stamp Act of 1765. Every legal document had to have a stamp of the British government on it to be official. As bad as this was, it was nothing compared to the Townsend Acts of 1767. It imposed duties on tea and paper, lead, glass, you name it. A year later, those hated Townsend Acts were repealed, all but one. Two years after that, the East India Tea Company, then on the verge of bankruptcy, was excluded from these duties. It meant the end of many American tea companies and thus precipitated the Boston Tea Party. The king decided to punish the entire city of Boston by closing her port to all commerce in 1774. Unanimous was the resistance. And thanks to the Great Awakening, there was now a new generation of people that understood and they had considerable spiritual depth and maturity of what scripture said about this. It was almost as if King George was in the front seat himself as the pastors of the founding era began preaching sermons about this taxation without representation. Like Pharaoh, the king's heart was hardened and now Americans were being taxed for the mother country's own revenue. At the same time, they were being denied their basic right to representation in the government. For King George to ignore this right, which was guaranteed by the Magna Carta, it simply meant that he was putting himself above the law. And that settled everything. As George and his ministers relentlessly increased the pressure 
taxes to bring upon the colonists, to bring them to their knees. The resistance from the American pulpits also increased. And the people would no longer stand for taxation without representation. Most of the crown appointed governors in the states, they remain submitted to the king. But at this time, the American renewal began because of the Great Awakening. If you asked an American who was his master, he would tell you that he has none. If you asked him who was his governor, he would say he has none but Jesus Christ. It gave rise to the cry that past the length and breadth of America, we have no king but King Jesus. The political cartoon of the day reflected other thoughts. It pictured a snake in the 13 sections with the caption, Don't Tread on Me. You've seen that flag flying in America today. These patriots, as they called themselves, had almost given up on ever finding an event that would catalyze or put them together into a union. The event came their way when the British decided to punish Boston for her tea party and they closed the most prosperous port in America to all incoming and outgoing trade, thereby ruining Boston financially, imposing upon her an almost starvation condition. The people would not have that they would not allow that. And so as the dawn broke in the year of 1775, the new nation of the United States of America responded as one body to the ringing words of Patrick Henry's famous speech given on March 23rd in the Virginia House of Burgess. And I'll end with this as he said, is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, Almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. <laughs>